so talking about fasting, I knew this was going to come up, so I saved this. Um, it popped up on my Twitter feed. Do you know who Carnivore Aurelius is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I follow yeah. them. Yeah. Half the time I'm like, I don't know if this is a parody or what it is, but I just <laughs> yeah. I enjoy the content nonetheless. So an article was posted today and it says intermittent fasting, the celeb favorite diet followed by Kourtney Kardashian and Mark Wahlberg may raise your risk of an early death by 30 percent. Studies tracked 24,000 Americans over 40 from across the U.S. in nearly 15 15- over 15 years compared to three one meal a day linked to 30 percent raised real risk of all-cause death skipping breakfast was linked to a higher chance of dying from heart disease yeah so we would have to dissect that right because here here's the truth if you could put fasting into a pill I mean, they would be all over that. There would be so many studies. I'm putting that in quotation marks because studies could be manipulated. So with this one, for example, like I would need to know, okay, what were they told what to eat during their eating window or they ate whatever they wanted? Because there's a difference between, you know, fasting and and gorging yourself on inflammatory foods, Mm -hmm. you know, versus fasting and eating the right way. Mm -hmm. And then number two, I I would want to know, like, did they account for women versus men? Because they should be doing it differently. So there's a lot of moving Mm -hmm. parts here. I would kind of dissect that, but I, I see this happen all the time. These headlines come out and I, I do think it's because you can't put it into a pill. As a matter of fact, they're going to lose a lot of money when people start practicing fasting. And we could get into the science of it if you want. I, I love talking about fasting, but I would need to dissect how that study was done and kind of the different variables at play to get a good idea. Of yeah, I'd love to be, because to my, I guess... What seems, especially for women, is that it would create a lot of stressor, like a biological stressor. And sometimes that's great. Like for our skin, for example, you want to create stress and trauma and then that that creates more growth. And that's how you regenerate collagen is by doing lasers and peels and retinol at night. So you actually are creating some kind of trauma. And Mm -hmm. so not all stress is bad. Um, So I'm assuming that there's probably a fine line when it comes to fasting where you if you do it properly, it's not going to hurt your hormones, but especially as a woman, you want to make sure that you handle it delicately. A hundred percent. Yeah. So here's, here's like kind of the pitfalls of fasting. It's gotten really popular the last few years. And it's funny because when I started talking about intermittent fasting and learning it and teaching it and, and posting about it, like in 2015, I was getting so much hate. People were telling me I was creating like eating disorders and you're telling people to starve themselves. And now it's a little bit more popular, so I don't get as much hate, but that there's still a little bit of, of that out there. But to your point, stress. Stress is only bad when your body does not adapt to it. Stress is so important and vital for health and longevity when you adapt to it. So there's something called hormesis. Are you familiar with hormesis, Mm-mm. Candace? Yeah, hormesis is a really cool process. Most people are not familiar with it. So essentially it means... Apply a stress, adapt to it, you get stronger. Apply too much of a stress and you don't adapt to it, you get weaker. So the perfect example is exercise, right? If you have not worked out in months or years, you've been a couch potato and you go and you start to work out, let's say 30 minutes, three times a week, you rest in between each session, you're going to get stronger and healthier. But if you decide to go and work out and do CrossFit after being a couch potato for years, you're probably going to hurt yourself and get worse. So there's this hormetic ceiling. We want to stay within that hormetic ceiling and different people have different ceilings, right? So let's say you do do the right dose of exercise. You stay within that ceiling, you adapt, and then you get stronger and that ceiling gets built up. But if you do too much stress, your body doesn't adapt. So fasting is the same thing. Uh, Anybody who says you should not do fasting because it's a stress to your body, that's like saying you should never exercise because it's stress to your body. Mm -hmm. They're right and they're wrong at the same time. Mm -hmm. So to your point, you know, these micro needling, red light therapy, sunshine, um, cold plunging. These are all stressors, but if you adapt to it, you get healthier and stronger. Same thing with fasting. And when it comes to fasting, for sure, women need to do it differently than men. I have an entire chapter in my book, Keto Flex chapter 12 is all about how women should do it. Cycling women versus Mm postmenopausal women versus men. So I'll give you an example for the women who have a menstrual cycle the week before their period. So about seven to 10 days preceding their, their bleed, their first bleed, that's the week to not practice fasting and not do keto. You want to build the hormone progesterone. So you do that by feasting and you do it with healthy carbs um, and not keto. And then once you, the period starts, you actually um, are more uh, inclined with your hormones to actually practice more keto and fasting. So those are like different variations right there. So the bleed week 
great for fasting and keto. The week before the period, not so much. So there's always different considerations. And if you do it with your hormones instead of against it, it's so powerful. I mean, it raises human growth hormone. It lowers inflammation. It helps with thyroid health. A lot of people think you can't fast if you have a thyroid condition. That's not true. The right amount could help. So there's a lot of considerations there. It could be such a powerful tool. And look, our ancestors, they didn't distinguish. Uh, a famine was a famine, right? Mm -hmm. So women had to go through the famine just like men and were genetically hardwired. Every a single 20, uh, 30 to 70 trillion cells in our body are gen genetically hardwired for these feast famine cycles. It's an amazing process and uh, your hormones actually become more optimized when you practice fasting the right way and the right dosage.